one. A widget is selected by touch by transversing the list of children. Two, a ball shaped widget is drawn here. The root widget is based on relative layout. Besides the app, we need to graphic classes since we will be dynamically adding code to highlight the selected child. Three key V properties are used. The object property will be used to point to the selected child. In the Boolean property, we will hold the current state of whether a child has been selected. The numeric property will hold the counter, indicating the number of ball widgets that have been added. 3. The ball widget holds only the counter numeric property. The root, based on relative layout, also has a numeric property with that name. This does not create any problem, however, it clarifies that they will be the same number most of the time. The variable selected is an object property and will be used to point to the selected child. The boolean property will indicate a child has been selected. 4. The onTouchDown function is run whenever a touch or click has been detected. We first test if the touch coordinates are inside the lower left region of size of 100 by 100. This is where toggle buttons will be placed by the KV file. The two toggle buttons will be draw and select. If a touch occurs over that place, we return to super. So the toggle buttons can handle this event. Next, we test if the select toggle button is in the on or down state. 5. If a condition is true and we are in select mode, we look at children list. Since the root is based on relative layout, the children will include anything inside the relative layout. This includes the two toggle buttons and any balls added. If a child's coordinates include the touch coordinate, the selected object property points to this child and a CL becomes true. 6. Next, there are drawing instructions. A black color is selected and then a dash rectangle is drawn. We used a user data dictionary, UD, in the touch variable. After a child has been selected, we break out of the for loop. 7. The on touch move will be called when there is dragging motion. First the select toggle button is checked and also the SEL variable. If so, the last selection rectangle is removed. Next, a local variable child is used to point to variable and selected. We change the child center position to the touch position. 8. Next, a new selection rectangle is drawn. This one will be updated to reflect the new touch position. 9. Finally, once the dragging is finished, the onTouchUp function is called. The if statement checks if mode is select and the SEL is true. If so the last select rectangle is removed and now the SEL becomes false. Next, if the coordinates are inside the toggle buttons, we return. 10. If the draw toggle button is in the down state, the counter is incremented and a new ball widget is created. The ball's counter is updated as well. Finally, the widget is added to the layout. 11. The app class must exist for the main file. The title of the main window is Widget Selection. 12. In the KV file, first we define the ball as 50 by 50 pixels and color cyan with a background image of KV.png. We had used this image earlier. 13. On each ball, we have a label indicating the current counter number. 14. The background is green. The draw and select attributes are created. These point to the two toggle buttons. 15. This is the first toggle button for the draw mode. Its ID is draw. 16. The other toggle button is for select and has the ID select. 
we had used these IDs in the attribute definitions. 17. In this result, we can see that the initial mode is draw, and by clicking we draw a ball. Actually it is drawn on the release of a click. Thus we can drag to find the best place to place the widget. Also note that if we are in select mode, the higher numbered balls have a higher Z index, and thus they will be the topmost widget should two widgets be at the same place. In this example, we used the dictionary within the touch variable, since this would be available to other touch functions. 18. You can find additional information including the source code at pythonmobile.blogspot.com.